Hello, this is Farmer Danielle with Green Our Planet. We're here at Dondero Elementary School in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I'm going to be teaching a lesson. It is all about ecosystems and biodiversity and it will incorporate a hands-on activity in which the students actually construct an ecosystem using some materials that we provide. Anything else that we can eat? Nice memories from last time you visited the garden? Yeah. You smell some fresh plants? Beautiful. You got to pick squashes, that's right. Butternut squash, right? Yeah. So right now, um, out in our garden, things are a little bit slow. Does anyone have any idea why it's a little bit slow in the garden right now? <laughs> because it's winter. And in the winter, the weather is cold. cold. And just like we move slowly in the cold, plants grow slowly too. Actually, a lot of the plants that I put on this list we can grow in the winter time, but things are just growing a little more slowly. Uh, but everything is planted, so no worries. But today we're actually not going to talk about plants specifically. We're going to talk about a different concept, and that is ecosystems. Okay? So I want everybody to open up their notebooks to the first page. Some of you already have done that. The first open page. Or if you have a loose piece of paper, that's fine as well. And I want you to write ecosystem biodiversity, okay? So we are going to either learn or review a lot of words today, a lot of keywords. So I wrote our keywords here on the board, okay? But first, I wanna see if anyone can, in their own words, explain what an ecosystem is. What is an ecosystem? Yeah? Um, that's right. It's a place where an animal needs to search for resources for survival. What types of resources do animals or other living things need? Yeah? Food. Right. So, water, food. What's one more thing? When you guys go to sleep tonight, will you be just going, laying down on the ground and just go to sleep? No. Where do you go? Where do you go at night? You go, you go to your shelter. Yes, that's right. We go to our shelter. So those are the three main things that all living things need to survive. So an ecosystem, yes, is a system in which all of these living things need to either eat each other or something gets eaten or um, a living thing requires other living things in order to survive, right? And it's a network, okay? And that's another word for that is food web. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm gonna give you an example of a time in history in which um, an ecosystem changed. Has anybody ever heard of Yellowstone National Park? Yes. yes. Okay. A long time ago, in the late 1800s actually, there were a lot of cattle ranchers around the area around Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming and in Idaho. Okay, people raised cattle and there was a certain apex predator that would harm the cattle ranchers cattle. Does anyone know what that animal was? Wolves. Okay. I'm going to try to draw a wolf. Now don't laugh at me. The wolf was eating the cattle. Moo. <laughs> okay, the wolves were eating the cattle. So the government told the cattle ranchers that they could hunt the wolves as much as they wanted. So something else that the wolves did within Yellowstone National Park, where there weren't cattle, within the national park, um, they were also eating a lot of moose. Okay, what sound do mooses make? You'd think so, but I don't think they make that sound. <laughs> I think they go, Yeah. <laughs> Everyone make a moose sound. <laughs> they were eating lots of moose, okay? Um, the moose, they also, they eat lots of plants, right? They're herbivores. Moose eat plants, okay? So we had lots of plants growing by the river. This is the river. All right? And the moose would eat the plants, but they wouldn't eat too many of the plants because the wolves would eat the moose. They would keep them in check, right? 
okay? Now, eventually, the cattle ranchers were hunting the wolves so much because the government did not restrict how many wolves could be hunted that the wolves kind of started to, to go extinct almost, okay? Wolf populations were really low, okay? Fantastic for cattle ranchers, right? They can raise tons of cattle. They can produce tons of beef. It's fantastic for people who like beef and cattle ranchers, yeah? But because the wolves were gone, what else was really happy? The moose population increased. So yes, it was the moose. They overpopulated moose. I don't know what these are, but these are moose, okay? And they eat lots and lots of grasses, all right? They eat so many grasses and they eat so many willow trees, okay, that the vegetation lining the rivers started to disappear. Okay, and what happens when we take a lot of plants away from the edge of the river? Lots of insects that, lives in, that lived in the plants, they had to go somewhere else for their survival. And the types of things that eat insects, those might be birds, for instance. So bird populations, they would probably suffer, right? And they wouldn't hang out by the river anymore. And something else that happens when plants grow alongside the river is they control the river's flooding, okay? And when the plants leave the river banks, the river can get wider and wider and wider. What types of things would be affected by the change of a watershed like that? Maybe it kill like new animals? Right, maybe it would, it would kill things that would live by the banks of the river. Also, fish. Fish rely on deep pockets in river areas, and when the river sort of floods out, it makes the river more shallow across the board in general. Not deep, but shallow. And so there weren't as many fish collecting around certain parts of the river. And also, it made it a lot trickier for beavers. What do beavers do? They build a dam. Yeah. They build dams to um, purify the water. Yeah, they build dams to help control the water flow, right? And to help purify the water. So beavers were impacted by the fact that the river was so much wider now. Okay? So you see that because wolves um, were not really predating or hunting moose anymore, all of these other populations were impacted, right? Okay, so we kind of we kind of got the point of that story, right? Yeah. That it's a trickle down. It's not as simple as wolves disappearing, but everything is affected, okay? Sometime around the 1960s, um, scientists said, hey, we need to bring wolves back into Yellowstone. It is causing chaos out there. The moose are going crazy, right? There's not a lot of vegetation. Everything is off balance. So gradually they helped reintroduce the wolves because they realized that even though the wolf is a predator, and quite scary, it's very important for the ecosystem, okay? So anyways, what I was saying, um, the Yellowstone ecosystem is a very large ecosystem, but there are lots and lots of much smaller ecosystems all over the place. And in fact, we have an ecosystem in our garden. Our garden has its very own ecosystem. Okay, we talked about how having the wolves and having these other populations of life is important and that is called biodiversity. Okay, does so anyone raise your hand if you've heard that term before? Biodiversity, all right? Having lots of different types of living things in a natural place is important because it helps keep the balance. And biodiversity in our garden is also very important, okay? So we are going to do a little activity where we are going to build an ecosystem or create a food web based upon some of the living things we have in our garden. Okay? So, this is my favorite game. The first thing that we need to do is learn about some of the living things we have in our garden. And I'm going to pass out cards for some of those living things that I've seen the most of in our garden. A insect, it might be a mammal, it might be something even smaller than an insect or a mammal, okay? But what you need to do when I pass out your cards is I need you to read the back and I want you to learn everything you can, okay? So we're gonna practice our reading skills a little bit. So what is the first step? To read, to read the back. So this is the next step. We're going to go out into the garden and I want you to find a spot that your living thing might like. So if you were a living thing and you came across our garden, 
where would you go first? Whoever has a tomato hornworm? I found a tomato plant over here. The tomato hornworm. Where's my tomato hornworm? Over the winter, they hide under leaf litter and dense foliage. Until spring. Until spring. So you would be hiding under leaf litter. The aphids usually love to sit right where the leaves come out of the stems and they just sit there and they suck the juices out of the plant. Don't so this is the perfect habitat for your aphids. Don't ladybugs eat aphids? La ladybugs do eat aphids. Where's our ladybug? There's a ladybug in this class somewhere. Okay, everybody, let's all gather around here. We have another uh, step for this game. This is my favorite part. So everyone found habitat? Yeah. You need to make sure that you're holding your cards either up on your head or in front of your chest so everyone can see you. Now, we all know everything about our living thing, right? Yeah. Now, we need to go hunt for food. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We need to hunt for food. And so, if I'm a bird, I am going to look for small insects that I like to eat. My bird, my bird likes small insects, I decided. So once I find something that I like to eat, link arms with that person. And then we're going to walk around and look for something else that we can eat. Okay? So I might have also found a butterfly. And I would link arms with that person and we will walk around together looking for other things that we can connect with. Okay, guys, if you oh. forgot what your living thing might like to eat, just read the back. They eat insects. Insects. So usually insects eat more than one type of insect. A grasshopper is much bigger. A leafhopper is a teeny tiny insect um, that kind of behaves the same as aphids do. They're really tiny. An aphid looks like that. All right. And you know, we can have lots of different connections, right? Because living things, they have, they eat lots of different things, just like we do. Bull weevils, it's a type of beetle. Yeah. Okay, let's keep walking around. Ooh, I see a blossom and I see a bee. Don't bees love flowers? Get over here. Where's the lizard? Where's the lizard? Where's the lizard? Okay, you can eat this caterpillar. I'm done. I'm full. Birds eat worms, sure. All right, cool. There we go. Okay, who is missing a connection? A dragonfly. What do dragonflies eat? Does anyone know? They actually uh, eat insects. Yeah, they're carnivores. They eat little insects, little flying insects like mosquitoes. Where are the little teeny tiny insects? We're figuring it out like it's a math problem, right? Who is missing a connection? We have a butterfly right here. Raise your hand if you eat butterflies. I eat moths. I eat butterflies. I eat larvae. Raise your hand if your insect eats butterflies. Okay, there you go. You can eat a butterfly. Sure. All right. Now, something that we're missing here in our ecosystem, my friends, is those teeny tiny little flying insects that are all over the garden all the time and dragonflies would love to eat those guys yeah little fruit flies or leaf hoppers lucy had a bug called a squash bug or a stink bug now those bugs in my opinion are some of the worst bugs for the garden because they will come into our garden when we're growing pumpkins and squash and they will suck all the juices out of the plant and they'll just kill the plants Oh. and they'll destroy a gardener's pumpkin crop. What do you think would happen if I took squash bugs out of the picture? What types of living things might suffer if I remove squash bugs from the picture? If I remove squash bugs from our ecosystem? Maybe spiders. Yeah, maybe spiders would, would go hungry because spiders like to eat squash bugs. What else would go hungry? I might go hungry. Birds like to eat squash bugs. Yeah. Where's my lizard? Over right here. Yeah. Does anyone have a wasp? 
Do they have a wasp card? Wasps? Do they have wasps? Wasps are um, also love squash bugs because they lay their eggs on their backs. I eat squash. Uh huh. And then the, the larvae hatch out of the eggs and they eat the squash bug. So wasps would probably miss squash bugs too, right? It might cause a sort of imbalance if I remove any of you from our ecosystem, right? Yeah. Did anyone else have something interesting they'd like to share? Yeah? Um, the, my mine is called an assassin bug, but sometimes they call them kissing bugs because they use their mouth to pierce insects, they insect prey, and they suck up the lizards. That's right. Do you think an assassin bug would like to eat a squash bug? Yes. Probably. Probably. Yeah, that's a pretty cool bug, isn't but, it? But the squash bug looks a little bit It does, but you know what? The assassin bug doesn't care because it sucks the juices out of it. Ew! Yeah, crazy, right? I like that. Yeah. Uh, the, the tomato hornworm caliphater um, uh, lives in the uh, underground and makes a cocoon. A cocoon. Oh, oh, a cocoon. Yeah. Yeah. She had a really cool one. And we, you know what we figured out? Sometimes her caterpillar sits on the plants and eats the leaves, right? But what does it do in the wintertime? In the spring, it, the adult must grow down. Yeah, so in the winter, so what it does when it gets cold is it is it after eating so many leaves, it drops off of the tomato plant and it makes a cocoon, right? And then the cocoon burrows under the ground and then it waits there until the weather gets warm. And then in the springtime, what comes up out of the ground? A butterfly. A moth, technically. A moth, which is very similar to a butterfly, but it's a moth. And we know that because its larva comes from underground instead of hanging from the leaves. Very interesting, huh? Yeah. All right, guys. So we talked about ecosystems. We talked about biodiversity. We practice our reading skills. All right, guys. So the next class has come out. Thank, Thank you, you so much. That was so much fun.